Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the significance of having a strong subconscious sense of self-worth for manifesting your desires and ultimately your dream life. We're also going to dive into four tips that you can use to increase your sense of subconscious self-worth and manifest those deep, deep desires. Before we dive in, please remember to hit the like button, click subscribe, and that way you'll be notified every time I post a new video. All right, let's dive in. Hi everyone, my name is Kelly and welcome to my channel. Like I said, today we're going to talk about why having a strong sense of self-worth subconsciously is so powerful for manifestation. Well, let me start with this, a little story, a little tidbit for you guys. When I first learned about manifestation many, many years ago, I was super excited, probably like a lot of those of you watching this right now. And while I was really excited, I was under the impression that you needed to be positive in order to have this higher vibration so that you could attract what it is that you wanted to call in. And so there I went on my way, trying to be positive all the time. Now, I don't know if a lot of you can relate, I'm sure some of you can, but I'm an emotional person. So for me, trying to be positive all the time was actually just leading to me suppressing my emotions, what some people would call spiritual bypass, ignoring my emotions and just trying to be positive all the time. And that did not work at all for me. It led me to be really frustrated with myself. I had a lot of shame of like why I wasn't more positive, why I wasn't more grateful, and so on and so forth. It's actually very, very, very important that we acknowledge our emotions. We have the full spectrum of our emotions for a reason, and they are meant to be felt. They are meant to be teachers. They are meant to show us where we are in alignment, where we are out of alignment, so that we can, you know, check back in with our soul make adjustments and move forward, you know, in the direction of our most aligned, authentic, soul-led self, right? What we really need to do is feel our emotions, find a way to integrate those emotions, to release them where they need to be released, and then we can get back to that feeling of being positive and being in that higher energetic vibration which does magnetize our manifestations to us, okay? So I just wanna lead with that so that you know if you've heard of this idea of being positive so you have this higher vibration and you attract your manifestation, there is something to it, but that's not what's most important. The most important thing that we can do to call in our desires is to make sure that we have a strong subconscious sense of self-worth around what it is that we are calling in, what it is that we are manifesting. If we don't deep down in our subconscious brain, the part of our brain where we actually take those like daily actions from, the part of us that's kind of just on autopilot, um, that part of us that reacts to different scenarios in our life, that subconscious part. If we don't feel worthy deep down there of what it is that we're asking for, then we're not going to ever be in, in energetic alignment with what it is that we're calling in. Um, we are not going to find ourselves able to take the steps that we need to take to help that manifestation come in. So we have to have this strong sense of self-worth in our subconscious mind around what it is that we are asking for. So if you are calling something in let's say your dream home, right? Let's use that as an example. If you don't believe that it's actually possible for you, right? You can say all day long, like, I want this dream home in this place. I want it to look like this. I want it to be furnished like this. You can say that all day. You can tell yourself, I deserve it. But if you deep down don't believe it's possible for you, that you're worthy of that because maybe you didn't grow up with that, right? Maybe you didn't grow up in that environment. Maybe you never had good finances. Like there could be all these things leading you to deep down, not actually believing that it's possible for you to have that dream home. So if that's the case, you're not gonna find yourself 
feeling motivated to take the steps that you need to because there's going to be shame there, right? There might be guilt. There might be other emotions that are underlying. So the first thing to do that's really important is to just notice, okay, what it is that I've been wanting to call in and if it's been extra challenging for me to call this in, most likely um, there's a block there subconsciously around self-worth. So it's really easy to look at the things we've been wanting for a long time that somehow like haven't been coming in because most likely there's going to be a block there for you. So once you notice, okay, I have a block of self-worth in this area, or maybe just for the, my dream life as a whole, here are four steps that you can take to increase your sense of subconscious self-worth so that you can call in your desires. So tip number one is to figure out where you have the block, what the limiting belief is, and where the root came from, okay? So you realize you have a block in this certain area. Maybe it's for your dream home. We'll go back to our example. Now, what is the belief, the limiting belief that's keeping me from believing that that is possible for me? So for our example of the dream home, maybe the limiting belief is I could never save up enough money for a down payment. Okay, now where does that root come from? Where is that rooted from? Well, maybe for our example, maybe the root of not being able to save up enough money comes from the fact that you've never been able to save money before. Maybe you were never taught how to save money growing up. So that would be the first step. Figure out, you know, where there's a block, what the limiting belief is around the block, and then if you can, where that limiting belief took root in your life. That simple process of identifying where the limiting belief came in is super powerful because now you're conscious of it and now you're gonna start noticing when that comes up and that awareness is what's gonna give you the opportunity to make different choices and to make changes. All right, tip number two is to begin the process of rewiring your neural pathways. So we have these neural pathways in our brain and all the things that we find ourselves doing in our day-to-day -day that are kind of habits, those are basically really well-worn neural pathways. They're like these well-worn roads. And so it's just, that's like our autopilot, our automatic state of being, right? So if we want to make a change in our life, say we want to rewire the idea that we cannot save money, we need to start doing things that are going to help us create a new neural pathway, a new well-worn road that tells us, yes, I can do this. And yes, I have the ability to ultimately save up enough for that down payment for my dream home. So ways that we can do this include, one, creating an affirmation. I love affirmations, they're super powerful. Um, for this example, my affirmation could be, I have an abundance of money in my savings account, okay? So that can be your affirmation. And so typically you'll know when you create an affirmation like that, if there's a limiting belief, you'll know because when you say it, it doesn't feel right in your body. It doesn't feel like it's actually possible for you. It doesn't feel like it's actually your state of being. So you wanna repeat that affirmation over and over as often as possible throughout the day, write it over and over in your journal, and that will help you to create a new neural pathway to help you do that. There's other more tangible ways to do that, and I'm gonna dive into those with our next steps. Okay, so the third step that you can take is to cultivate courage, practice courage on a day-to-day -day basis. Even small acts of courage help to increase our self-confidence, which over time helps to increase our sense of self-worth. So just doing small courageous acts every day, something as small as saying hi to someone that you pass by just to be nice, right? That can even feel scary. Like just walking past someone, smiling at them, saying hello, depending on where you're from. Like I'm from Southern California. A lot of people won't even look you in the eye and say hi to you because that's just not the culture here. So it can actually feel intimidating just to say hi to someone. So if that is something intimidating to you, try that. Like practice little ways of courage, as simple as something like smiling at someone, saying hello, 
doing a good deed, um, just putting yourself out there, maybe going to a yoga class if you've been wanting to try yoga and it's been scary. These small acts of courage build into big self-confidence and big self-worth. So practice being courageous. Um, and it doesn't have to be small ways, it can be big ways, but it's always good to start small and build up. Maybe eventually you find yourself um, you know, running a half marathon or going on a solo trip to a place that you've always wanted to go to, right? So you can start small and build into these bigger things. And I'm telling you right now, building our self-confidence is such a huge way to increase that sense of self, subconscious self-worth so that you can call in what you really want. Okay, step four is to protect your balance, safeguard your balance. If we are out of balance, it's gonna be really hard to feel um, worthy because if we're not in balance, if we're not protecting our balance, if we're allowing other people to walk all over us or if we're constantly committing to things that aren't in alignment with us, we're gonna drain ourselves of our energy and we're ultimately telling ourselves that we aren't worth it, right? We're not worth um, the self-care and the self-love that comes with recognizing like how we need to be living our lives to be in balance. So a couple ways that we can do this, look at your life and implement different structures that can help you to feel more balanced. Maybe it's meditating in the mornings. Maybe it's just making sure that you're eating a healthy dinner every night. So look at your life and look at, okay, how can I add some things into my life to enhance my sense of balance and well-being? On the other hand, you can add in boundaries, which sometimes can be more important than the structures. Um, if there's people in our life that are draining our energy, we need to set boundaries with them. That might mean not having certain sorts of conversations, or that might mean um, you know, things like not spending time with that person very often or at all. Um, so look at who you need to set boundaries with in your life, and then also look at what boundaries do I need to set with myself? If watching Netflix every night is impeding on me feeling balanced, which that would, um, then I would want to set a boundary with myself for that. Maybe I can watch Netflix twice a week, something like that. Okay, and then our last and final step is to find expanders. So these are people that help us to believe that our manifestation is possible for us. So maybe they come from a similar background, maybe they've been in a similar um, situation as we currently are in, but they've been able to manifest what it is that we want. So that's called an expander. Um, I got that term from Lacey Phillips. She's an amazing manifestation teacher. For our example, for the house, right? If I was going to you know, try to buy my dream home and I wanted to pick an expander for it. Maybe I would find a friend of mine who has a dream home of theirs. Maybe it's similar to my dream home, maybe not, but maybe they started out with you know, nothing and they were able to save that money and buy that dream home. So that would be a perfect example of an expander for our dream home example. Just to review our tips, one, identify the limiting belief around the manifestation uh, find the root cause of it. And two is gonna be to rewire our neural pathways. Step three is going to be to find courage and live courageously to increase our confidence and thus our subconscious self-worth. Step four is going to be to protect our balance. So create structures, create boundaries, protect our balance to the best of our ability. And step Five is to find expanders for what it is you want to manifest. Um, just a little quick thing to add in with that. These can be people you know, they can be people you don't know, they can be celebrities, Instagram, people that you follow, um, they can be your friends, your family, so they can really be anyone. All right, you guys, so that's it for today. Please comment below. Let me know what you're manifesting. Let me know which of these tips you love the most and make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you back here very soon.